Hello, everybody. Happy Wednesday. I hope you're having a great week so far. Uh, we're going to talk today about dietary fat and how eating fat does not equal body fat on our body. And we're going to talk a lot too about why we need dietary fat, why fat is something that we need to be eating and is not something that we should be completely avoiding. So let's get to it. So I am a kid from the 90s. I am a 90s girl. I love the 90s. I live in flannel shirts and ripped up jeans and Doc Martens, like literally. Although now that it's summer, I might trade the Docs for some flip-flops, but I love my Docs. Um, we had Nirvana. We had Titanic. Cell phones came out. We have Britney freaking Spears, man. Um, we had America Online. Who didn't love to hear, you've got mail, right? And for the record, if you don't love the movie, You've Got Mail with Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks, we cannot be friends. I'm sorry to tell you. Um, but one thing, as much as I love the 90s, one thing that is best left in the 90s is the low-fat diet. So dietary fat has nine calories per gram which is more than double what, how many calories are in one gram of protein and one gram of carbs. There's only four calories in a gram of protein and four calories in a gram of carbs. So with nine in one gram of fat, this idea led some people to get this wise idea that if we just cut fat out of our diets, then we'll lose weight, okay? So from this concept that, you know, whoever, whichever person decided to say this and, um, you know, people cling to it, you know how the media can be, a zillion fad diets then blossomed out of this idea. So um, in the 1990s, our market became completely flooded with all kinds of foods that were labeled fat-free, non-fat, low-fat, and things like that. And in theory, this was awesome because it meant that we got to eat all of these great foods that we liked without all of these pesky little calories that came from the fat. But it did not take us long to realize that when we remove fat from a food, it has to get replaced with something in order to taste good, right? A lot of times the fat is what makes it taste good. So when we remove the fat, we have to replace it with something else. And that something else is almost always sugar, and or a bunch of chemicals that I cannot pronounce. So um, I once heard low fat foods described by the phrase a chemical shitstorm. <laughs> and it has actually been years since I heard that and that has stuck with me forever. So many chemicals and of course everything is a chemical, I know. But um, there are certain ones we just don't really want in our food. Um, so there we were eating all of this overly processed food, completely void of nutrients, but it was low fat. And so we're thinking that we're doing the healthy thing. We think we're doing the better thing because it's low fat, right? So the trouble with that is that fat is an essential nutrient. It means that we literally cannot survive without it. So when we start removing so much fat from our diets, we start creating a lot of issues that um, we, certainly don't expect, especially when you think that you're doing the healthy thing by cutting out your fat. So now let's leave the 90s. Let's fast forward to today. Um, some things that we now know about fat and about food in general. One thing is that we know that the less processed the food is that we can eat, the better our body is going to absorb the nutrients in it and process it through our digestive system. So what I mean by less processed is things that are as close as we can to nature. So um, actual potato instead of potato chips, right? So um, when you think about process, you think about things that have um, had a lot of things added to it. It's been put through, you know, whatever machines, things like that. Um, and we think of less processed as in the produce department, the, the meat department, the outside edges of the grocery store. You may have heard people say, shop the outside edges, not the stuff in the middle. The things in the boxes and stuff, that's where our processed foods are. So we now know that the less processed we eat, in other words, not the non-fat and the low-fat versions of things, um, our body can actually deal with that food better and it can um, absorb the nutrients from that food better. So we actually get the benefits of the food. Um, another thing is that we know that as women, 
our bodies need somewhere around 30% of our total calories to come from fat. So, you know, maybe a little below 30, maybe a little over 30, everyone's going to be a little bit different, but we want to have around 30% of our total calories to come from fat because this is what we need to transport our hormones through our body. So there are a lot of women who um, uh, used low fat diets for weight loss that lost their period. And I can tell you this firsthand because it actually happened to me before I knew better, I was eating very low fat and um, I ended up losing my period for a period, period of time, no pun intended. Um, so um, when I discovered that this is not a good thing, as much as we might love not having to deal with your period each month, um, it is actually an unhealthy thing to be happening. That's something that we do want to try and rectify. And once I added um, a decent amount of fats back into my diet, lo and behold, period came back. So um, we now know, something else that we now know, is that our body fat does not come from the fat that we eat. Body fat comes from an excess of calories as a whole. So that excess of calories might come from eating too many fatty foods, but it is not directly from the fat. And as a side note, we also know, all of my cut out carbs people, body fat does not come from carbs. Body fat and carbs, that's not how that works, friends. Our body fat comes from an excess of calories, and you could have an excess of calories from anything. Protein, fat, carbs, alcohol, there can be an excess in calories from anything. There is no one nutrient that is responsible for body fat. So do me a favor, go enjoy a piece of bread. <laughs> um, something else that we know is that the fat that is in foods like avocados and um, uh, almonds, that's the word I'm trying to say, avocados and almonds can help improve our cholesterol. So we also know that we need to have dietary fat in order to absorb fat soluble vitamins like vitamin D, vitamin E, vitamin K. Also, we now know that our brain needs omega-3s, so think fish oil. Um, if you are not eating fatty fish often, and by often I mean at least twice a week, if not more, then you should be supplementing with a fish oil supplement every single day. Um, this is something that we know now, we didn't know in the 90s. Um, so these are just a few things that we now know about dietary fat and why we should not shy away from eating um, healthy dietary fats like avocados, um, nuts, seeds, um, healthy fish, um, olives, olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil, uh, flax seed, all of these healthy, um, very, very nutrient filled foods that we need. Our bodies literally need it and it will um, also can help improve your hair and your nails, things like that. So when you want to enjoy some low fat salad dressing, for example, because maybe it just helps fit in your, your uh, macros a little better, that's fine. However, don't be afraid to just use some olive oil and some vinegar or olive oil and lemon juice. I have been totally addicted to lately. Olive oil, lemon juice with some pink Himalayan salt. It's fantastic on a salad. Um, so don't be afraid to go with these versions, particularly the non-inflammatory oils like olive oil, avocado oil, coconut oil. So I will forever love my 1990s wardrobe and I will never get rid of my 1990s wardrobe. However, we are going to go ahead and move past the 1990s low-fat diet. And while it might be helpful to have some low-fat things once in a while, let's not be afraid of all of the regular, normal, full-fat foods. So if you have any questions, please leave them below. Um, if there's any other topics you would like to see me talk about in a live or a training you would like me to do, I would be more than happy to hear about it because I want to know what you want to know. So leave me any comments you've got below and I will see you all next week.